Hello, everyone. This is Sun Liu from University of Science and Technology, Beijing. Today, I will present for the paper Robust Turbulence Simulation for Particle-Based Fluids Using the Rankine Vertex Model. In this paper, we refine the turbulence details for fluid simulation based on smooth particle hydrodynamics. Our method is able to recover the vorticity dispersion for standard SPH approach and therefore improves the simulation quality for fluid animation in a reasonable way. Fluid simulation in computer graphics has been studied for a long time. The rapid improvement of computer performance makes it possible to obtain a more accurate fluid animation using physically based fluid simulation method. In theory, fluid motion can be described by the NS equations. It shows that the change rate of fluid velocity is largely related to the density, the pressure, the body force like gravity, and the viscosity due to the inset relative motion. To serve this partial differential equation, simulated fluid can be discretized as mass point called fluid particles. And the land speed for each particle can be computed according to NS equation using SPH approach. SPH approach can derive physical value of a certain position using a kernel function. The kernel function smooths the physical value of the neighbor fluid particle inside a smooth lens. It's also capable of approximating the first derivative and the second derivative of physical value by simply calculating those of a kernel function. As a kind of Lagrange method, the SPH method has been widely used in fluid simulation in the field of computer graphics. In order to obtain a higher accuracy for the simulation result, a wide range of study has been carried out about keeping the incompatibility of the fluid. The state-of-art method often applies the advection projection scheme to reach an incompressible state. Between two time steps, the gravity and the viscosity are first considered to alter the speed of each particle. This is called the advection step. Then the pressure of them is derived to reach the constant density condition, which is the projection step. Another artifact that affects accuracy of Lagrange fluid simulation is the energy dispersion. Consider a 2D disk with homogeneous density spanning around the mass center with an angular velocity of omega. An rotational kinetic energy can be expressed as follows. In Lagrange approach like SPH, an object is discretized into microscope particles and they are used to represent the mass, motion, and the energy of the disk based on the continuum hypothesis. Total kinetic energy of the disk can be represented by the linear kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy from each particle. One thing that is often omitted in Lagrange simulation is angular velocity. Traditional SPH approach neglects the self-spanning of those particles, which leads to numerical dispersion in rotational degree of freedom. Energy in rotational DOF is quadratic proportional to the radius of the discretized particles. This is especially significant to the fluid animation where the discretization is relatively close. Our work aims at recovering the dispersion energy from the angular velocity of particles. Then we use them to recover the linear velocity field. We will begin with showing how we get the angular velocity for the refinement. Since the velocity of a certain point is twice of the local angular velocity, and the crew of linear velocity can be conventionally derived in SPH system, we use the differential form to get a better accuracy of the vorticity. The angular velocity between two time steps can be expressed using vorticity. Traditional Lagrange vertex model 
utilize the vorticity field directly to refine the machine linear velocity. This refinement regenerates energy in the vorticity at the next time step. Instead, in our scheme, we refine the dependent vorticity field to avoid this issue. To convert angular velocity at certain point to the linear velocity of a particle with mass and volume, we resort to what's costly based a rotational vortex model to build the relationship. A simplified version of this model is called a Rankine vortex model. In this model, the vortex has a distinct viscous core which rotates like a rigid body. It has a radius of RC. Outside this core, the flow becomes irrotational and the velocity is inversely proportional to its position away from the vertex center. So, by deriving the dependent angular velocity at the particle center, we can use this value to produce a Rankine vortex and use vortex function to affect the linear velocity of neighboring particles accordingly. To determine the size of viscous core, we consider the lamb olsen vortex model, which is derived from NS equation directly. This vortex model shows the size of the viscous core is related to kinematic viscosity a constant value alpha. Also, a core goes with time. To simplify this function and make the effect reasonable, we set a time t at the simulation time step. Here is an example of how angular velocity from particle i affects the linear velocity of particle j. Suppose i carries a dispended angular velocity of delta omega i at the center O, and the viscous core is derived according to the previous description. We now can get linear velocity at point P on the viscous core surface as follow. ROP is a vector from O pointing at P. Using the Rankine vortex model, the refined velocity from I to J can be described using delta omega and distance vertex. If we put the vertex function here, we can see the relation of how angular velocity is transformed into the linear velocity of its neighboring particles. Further, we want to performance of our method to be more flexible and controllable to the user. So we add adjustable parameter beta to this process, which can be set between zero to one. The refinement can now be controlled linearly. This beta is used to change the size of the viscous core. When beta equals to 1, the core is at its maximum. As beta gets smaller, the influence of Rankine vortex will be shrinking and will be of no effect when beta equals to 0. Here is an overview of our algorithm. Here, our method is integrated with traditional advection projection scheme. We integrate our refinement after each time step to affect the movement of each fluid particle. As we can see, the computational overhead is negligible compared to the whole SPH approach, since our method only needs to derive one first order value and one vector produced, and doesn't require additional neighbor search. This is the simulation result using our method and comparison with other methods. So in this experiment, the first row is our method and the second row is the simulation result using MP method. It could be said that using our method, we can achieve a more turbulent result than This is the second experiment blocks falling to the water with 1 million particles. The left one is the simulation result using MP method, and the right one is the simulation result using our method. There are some unreasonable motion in MP method. This is a comparison result with our method and the standard DFSPH method.
It could be seen that turbulence is generated when fluid flowing across the obstacles. This is a popular rotational experiment. The left one is a simulation result using IISPH. The middle one is a simulation result using MP method. And the red one is a similar result using our method. When the popular rotationing, there are some turbulence generated over the surface. This is a 2D comparison result which shows vorticity in 2D view. When the vorticity is much more larger, the color is in white. So in summary, we proposed a particle-based turbulence simulation scheme that effectively elevates numerical dispersion by deriving linear velocity from missing angular velocity. We introduced the ranking vertex model for vertex flow to create additional turbulence that can be controlled using a parameter without adding extra energy. Our method can be simply integrated into other particle-based methods and fluid servers which is an upgrade to the traditional SPH method framework with turbulence refinement. The limitation and future work will only enhance the turbulence effect from the perspective of energy loss and doesn't consider conservation. Moreover, turbulence is an extremely complex phenomenon, which is often accompanied with other phenomena. We would like to extend the approach for implicate boundary handling and multiple phase. Uh, multiple phase fluids. That's all. Thank you very much for your hearing.